library friends, I'm Miss Connie from the Hopewell Branch, and welcome to another episode of Biography Shorts for Kids. We have been celebrating Women's History Month and have videos on our YouTube channel for peacemakers, STEM heroes, athletes, world leaders, and for the last week of the month, we are going to learn about artists. We will be looking at both performing artists and fine artists. Let's get started. Today we're going to learn about ballerina Misty Copeland, singer Aretha Franklin, and painter Frida Kahlo. First up is Misty Copeland. In 2015, Misty Copeland became the first African-American woman named the principal ballerina of the American Ballet Theater. Principal is the highest rank within a ballet company and would involve being a soloist or part of a pas de deux, which is a dance for two people. How did she get her start? Misty was born in Kansas City, Missouri in 1982. She moved to California when she was young. Her family didn't have much money and she and her mother and five siblings lived in a motel. Misty loved to dance. She was on the drill team at school and choreographed their routines. When she was 13, her coach suggested she try ballet. There were free classes at the local boys and girls club she loved it. Misty was very talented. She was on her toes after three months when it takes most ballerinas three years. Misty stood out as a ballerina. She comes from a very diverse background and there is not a lot of diversity in ballet. Misty's living situation made it hard to practice ballet. Her ballet teacher offered to host her, so Misty lived with her dance teacher during the week and visited her family on the weekend. After just eight short months, she earned the role of Clara in the Nutcracker. She was offered a scholarship to the American Ballet Theater's New York City Summer Camp program when she was 16. And after high school, she became a dancer with the company. This was a great accomplishment, but as one of a few people of color in ballet, she had to fight racism and stereotypes. As she became more accomplished, she used her platform to promote diversity in ballet and to encourage all kids to dance. Let's look at some books about Misty Copeland. Bunheads by Misty Copeland, illustrated by Sator Fiadzigbe. Misty Copeland tells the story of a young Misty discovering her love for dance through the ballet of Capellia. On her first day of class, Misty is absolutely captivated by the narrative of the story and entranced by the dance. Nervous yet excited, Misty decides to audition for one of the lead roles. As she prepares for the audition and eventually the performance, Misty learns to lean on her newfound friends for inspiration and rely on her own can-do spirit to dance her very best. Misty Copeland, Ballerina from the Junior Biography series, author Hannah Isbell. Misty Copeland is the first African-American woman to become a prima ballerina. She has spent her entire career supporting education, the arts, and equality for all. Discover her origins, how she became one of the best dancers in the world, and what's next for this talented ballet star. Firebird, ballerina Misty Copeland shows a young girl how to dance like the Firebird by Misty Copeland, illustrated by Christopher Myers. American Ballet Theater soloist Misty Copeland encourages a young ballet student with brown skin like her own by telling her that she too had to learn basic steps and how to be graceful when she was starting out and that someday with practice and dedication, the little girl will become a firebird too. Adventurers and Athletes, Women Who Made History by Julia Adams, illustrated by Louise Wright. These women have made history in their own rights and have paved the way for future generations to do so as well. This engaging resource tells the stories of these incredible women. Brief but detailed biographies hold readers' attention while the colorful illustrations bring the stories into splendid detail. The Nutcracker and the Four Realms 
Misty Copeland is the ballerina in this Disney motion picture from 2018. This movie is a reimagining of the E.T.A. Hoffman story, The Nutcracker and the Mouse King, and the ballet by Tchaikovsky. Next, we're going to learn about singer Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin lived between 1942 and 2018 and is known as the Queen of Soul. Aretha was born in Memphis, Tennessee. Aretha's father was a preacher. In 1944, they moved to Buffalo and two years later to Detroit, Michigan, where her dad was the pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church. Aretha and her brothers and sisters were part of the choir. From an early age, Aretha's talent stood out. At age six, Aretha's parents separated and her mother moved back to Buffalo. And at age 10, her mother passed away. A few months later, Aretha sang her first solo in church to more than a thousand people. Aretha had an ear for music. She could hear a song and sing it or play it on the piano right away. When she was 18, she moved to New York City to start a music career. She signed a record deal with a top record company. Aretha was also a civil rights activist. In the 1960s, segregation was a big problem. Aretha would not perform to whites-only audiences. She was a smart businesswoman, demanding cash payments before each show. She was crowned the Queen of Soul and in 1987 was the first woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Aretha sang her whole life. She inspired people of color and women to stand up for justice. She sometimes gave free concerts to earn money for the civil rights movement, and she donated money to help people and businesses in Detroit. She even sang for presidents. She won many awards in her lifetime and will always be remembered as the Queen of Soul. Let's look at some books about Aretha. A Voice Named Aretha by Katherine Russell Brown, illustrated by Laura Friedman. In this stirring biography of a true artistic and social icon, young readers learn how Aretha's talent, intelligence, and perseverance made her a star who will shine on for generations to come. Who is Aretha Franklin? From the Who Was series by Nico Medina and illustrated by Gregory Copeland. This book presents the life of one of the best-selling artists of all time from her start singing in front of her father's Baptist congregation to being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, Carol Boston Weatherford, and illustrated by Frank Morrison. This is the winner of the Coretta Scott King Illustration Award. In this book, we learn Aretha Franklin was born to sing. The daughter of a pastor and a gospel singer, her musical talent was clear from her earliest days in her father's Detroit church. Aretha sang with a soaring voice that spanned more than three octaves. Her incredible talent and string of hit songs earned her the title of the Queen of Soul. This queen was a multi-Grammy winner and the first female inductee to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And there was even more to Aretha than being a singer, songwriter, and pianist. She was an activist too. Her song, Respect, was an anthem for people fighting for civil rights and women's rights. With words that sing and art that shines, this vibrant portrait of Aretha Franklin pays her the R-E-S-P-E-C-T this Queen of Soul deserves. Respect by Otis Redding, illustrated by Rachel Moss. Uh, this is Otis Redding's classic song, Respect as popularized by Aretha Franklin, and it becomes an empowering picture book exploring the concept of mutual respect through the eyes of a young girl. Next, we're going to learn about painter Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo was born in Mexico City in 1907. She died in 1954. When she was six years old, she contracted polio and was very sick. It left her with a weak leg and a limp this didn't stop her. She worked very hard to get her strength back. Then when she was 18 years old, she was in a serious accident that left her in great pain. 
While recovering in bed, her mother made a special easel for her and hung a mirror over her bed so that she could paint. She painted mainly self-portraits, and she is recognized by her big eyebrows and the flowers in her hair. She also painted her animals and nature. When Frida was a young artist, she shared her paintings with the very famous muralist Diego Rivera. The two eventually married, and together they changed Mexican art. Frida was not well known for her paintings until 20 years after she died. Frida's paintings have hung all over the world, including in the Louvre in Paris and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. Frida Kahlo's paintings have sold for millions of dollars. Here are some more books about Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo and Her Animalitos by Monica Brown and illustrated by John Para. This book chronicles Frida's life from her childhood to her rise as one of the world's most influential painters, capturing the beauty and strength of Frida's creative spirit, which carried her through tragedy and triumph and the animals that inspired her along the way. Who was Frida Kahlo from the Who Was series by author Sarah Fabini and illustrated by Jerry Hoor. You can always recognize a painting by Kahlo because she is in nearly all with her black braided hair and colorful Mexican outfits. A brave woman who was an invalid most of her life, she transformed herself into a living work of art. As famous for her self-portraits and haunting imagery as she was for her marriage to another famous artist, Diego Rivera, this strong and courageous painter was inspired by the ancient culture and history of her beloved homeland, Mexico. Her paintings continue to inform and inspire popular culture around the world. What Would She Do? 25 True Stories of Trailblazing Rebel Women by Kay Woodward. From historic world leaders to brilliant scientists, artists, and modern day pioneers, What Would She Do? shares 25 incredible women's stories that educate and empower. Little Dreamers, Visionary Women Around the World by Vashti Harrison. From the author of Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History, comes the highly anticipated follow-up, a beautifully illustrated collectible detailing the lives of women creators around the world. The charming, information-filled, full-color spreads show the dreamers as both accessible and aspirational so readers know they too can grow up to do something amazing. As usual, I'm going to sneak in a couple of bonus biographies. A Girl Named Rosita, the story of Rita Moreno, actor, singer, dancer, trailblazer by Annika Denise and illustrated by Leo Espinoza. The life of Puerto Rican actress, dancer, and singer Rita Moreno from her girlhood journey to the United States to her rise as a timeless superstar. Audrey Hepburn from the Little People Big Dream series, written by Maria Isabel Sanchez Vigara and illustrated by Amai Arizola. This book presents information about Audrey Hepburn from her youth in Nazi-occupied Europe through her rise to stardom in some of the era's most popular films to her dedication to UNICEF. Beyonce, Shine Your Light by Sarah E. Warren, illustrated by Geneva Bowers. Follow the story of Beyonce as she finds her voice through trials and triumphs and understand that you too can shine your light like Beyonce. We are the Supremes from the Friends Change the World series by Zoe Tucker and illustrated by Celine Pereira. Flo, Mary, and Diana are teenage girls from Detroit with big ambitions. They want to be the best girl group in the world. They've got the style, they've got the moves, and boy, can they sing. This is the true story of the Supremes, three best friends and young black women whose stars shone so brightly they broke sales records and helped break down racial barriers at the same time. I've learned so much about these great women 
from the books that I checked out at the library. I hope you have also been inspired to learn more about these women by checking out some library materials. If you're not coming to the library, there are many ebooks, e audiobooks, and e videos that you can access at home with your library card. Just go to mcl.org and select catalog, and you will be able to search all of our materials, both electronic and physical. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you'll join us next week. Bye.